All right, so today on the video, I'm gonna go through my five ideas that I think would really help you use mid-journey. And some of these aren't as obvious as you think. And I wanna get right to it because we've got a lot to cover. So I've got a prompt already in here for the first one. And this is about using colors in your prompt. Now this might sound obvious, but I know a lot of people just throw in a prompt and they're not talking about the color palette or the color range or anything. And then they get stuff and it isn't what they like. It doesn't match what the client wants. It doesn't like focus on stuff. And one day maybe we can use Pantone colors or hex codes, but right now we just have to use color names and you don't even have to be specific. So I've got one right here, which is Angry Tiger Wet Plate Collodion, which is hard to say. That's a really old school photography technique. Hand tinted watercolor. And here's the prompt that I want you to pay attention to. Bright neon color palette, okay? Now this works great, especially when you do any type of pop art or anything. But when you're combining it with photography, you're combining a bit with something else like hand tinted watercolor, it really does some amazing things. And of course, I can't resist. I'm going to do repeat four. I always do that, as you know, if you've been watching these. And let's go ahead and let's look at our aspect ratio. I think that'll work. Our style's okay. Variety's okay. This is the level of creativity. This is how far apart all the different images will be. In repeat four, R4 is instead of getting four images at once, we're gonna get 16. So let's go ahead and get that going. So here I'm doing a tiger, but I want you to just to pay attention. This could be really anything, okay? So let's see what we created. And what I really like about this is we get a kind of a photography style. We get this old fashioned vintage technique, but look at the color blends that are in it. Check out that one, you know, and you get this old school kind of look, but you get this kind of new vibe on it. And that's because we're using bright neon color palette. Look at the pinks and that green and that yellow in that. I mean, it's just really amazing. So I'm just gonna scroll through these real quick and then we're gonna do the next one to see if, you know, do we got any one that we really, really like? I kind of like that one the best, I think. So how would you use it? What could you do? By the way, it doesn't have to be a tiger. It could be anything. So remember, use color descriptors, whether you're naming a color or just a color range, like bright neon color palette or autumn colors or something like that, and you're going to get a better result. Okay, so let's put in their next go round, right? And this is going to be all about combining two different ideas into one prompt, okay? So why does this matter? Because you're gonna get unexpected results. And one of the great things about AI image generators is you can mash ideas together to see what pops out. And here, we're combining embroidery with photography. And we also have a subject, which is an eagle head, right? So what are we gonna get out of this? I don't know, that's the fun part, right? And we're just gonna leave the same aspect ratio in stylize and all that as we did before. And we're gonna add in repeat four and we're gonna bust a move here. Let's see what we get. And of course, we get some amazing textural effects. So imagine this is something for one of your clients and you want to do something creative. Don't be normal, be different, right? Doing something looks photography-like, but hey, is that embroidery? Look at the texture. It doesn't even look perfect embroidery. It doesn't matter. It's just something different. And I think that's the reason why this could be a really cool technique for you, just because we're looking for something that isn't like everything else that gets noticed. And frankly, that's what we do as creatives, right? We want to give something that nobody else has ever seen before and I think this is a really dynamic way of using mid-journey is this type of stuff. We want to create stuff that doesn't look like AI created it. It came from something else. And I think that's one of the powers of mid-journey really delivers is the fact that sometimes you can't tell, hey, where'd that come from? 
And this is a way that you could do that, right? So let's look at some more of these. I like that one. Which one of these is your favorite? For me, it's this one. Anyway, which of these eagles do you like the best? Remember, we're taking two different ideas, embroidery and macro photography. What is macro photography? It's a close up. It's the zoom in. Embroidery and macro photography, and we're saying, hey, use that and make an eagle. This is how we get some fantastic results, and you can get that too. Find two things that don't really add up or don't even make sense and shove them together and see what you can get. Okay, here's the third one. Are you ready? So for this one, I want you to use specific jargon. And what I mean by this is there is a word in this prompt called head cut. So head cut is a very interesting way that the Washington Post illustrates all the people they have when they run an article. It's called a head cut style. So whether that comes from printing or art or photography or whatever it comes from, don't just say black and ink, whatever. Use more specific words, head cut, for example. And how you find this stuff basically is Google, right? Google, what are some terms? And then try those terms. Now I wanna show you what this looks like, of course. And here we're doing Santa Claus. Same aspect ratio and stylized and everything. And what we're going to get is a really great, fun Santa Claus. And it's gonna look like that particular head cut style kind of illustration, okay? Now, of course, some of these are better than others, just like that's why we do four at a time. This one looks kind of like Madman, I guess, but here's a good Santa, right? We really want one with a hat. That one's great. It's missing a little ball in the end, but I bet we get one in here sooner or later. Now I want you to see, does this look like AI did this? No, that's what really makes this prompt head cut so appealing is because this looks like it's something out of 150 years ago or whatever. Look at those little lines and all of that stuff. This would be fantastic on some packaging, Imagine this was printed with some burgundy or forest green ink on some tan cardboard stock or something. Or maybe you could go in and highlight some colors in it after behind it or drop a texture on top of it in Photoshop. This is a really great way to start on something with something that looks like it was drawn by hand. And of course, we both know it wasn't because you saw me do it. And so this is the really cool thing about this is all you have to do is find these terms. So I want you to learn specific jargon from printing, from photography, from art, right? Sculpture or painting or whatever. Find those terms, look up art history terms, use these words in your prompts, and then you can get a better result. And then of course, this could also be combined with an Omni reference, right? And so there's a photo you upload to somebody and you could have them illustrated in this style also. There's a whole other thing I could do with that, but I'm not because we're limited on time. So anyway, check this out and I think that you'll really like it because you can do a lot with it. Okay, so my fourth idea that I want you to try is using the year in your prompt. And here's what I mean. So let me paste my prompt in. Man, 1950s vintage cartoon character. That's already in your brain, maybe what that should look like, right? But it can be anything. It could be 1980s, 1970s, it could be 1880s, it doesn't matter. So the idea here is use this type of term to help define what the rest of the prompt is going to look like. So all of these other words about what the thing that we want. 1950s vintage cartoon character really drives home exactly the result that we want. So use that year to your advantage and let's see what, what Mid Journey gives us. So some of these are more 1950s than others, like that one. I mean, come on, that guy, right? These are all, those legs look weird, but that's kind of interesting. That guy, that guy, you know, these are all kind of uh, that kind of style. 
So what could you do with this? I love this one. This is my favorite. Looks like fallout a little bit. So one of these things that you got to like think about here is using a word like this, 1950s, really describes that style more than anything that you can put in there as a prompt. So use a year more in what you're trying to do. 1980s fashion, 19, you know, here where it's 1950s vintage cartoon character. So use that year as the anchor for your prompt and then see what else you can do. And I think that's really going to help you get a better result. And that's what we want, right? Better results. That's my favorite so far. What else we got? This guy's okay. Where's that guy relaxing with his feet up? I don't know what he's doing. He's doing sit-ups and drinking at the same time. Very interesting. All right, what's left? It's this one. And the idea here is to create more than one type of image at a time. And I've done other videos on this. This is the power permutations idea. And so you can see right here in your prompt, I've got a curly bracket and a curly bracket. That's that those keys right to the right of the letter P in your keyboard, the curly bracket, you gotta hold your shift key down. It's a little squiggle. And these two ideas are separated by a comma. So when you're separating by a comma, what happens is Midjourney understands this to mean one idea is gonna be a floral tapestry, one idea is gonna be a geometric, okay? And then what it's gonna do, it's gonna create uh, versions of that, especially when I hit repeat four. So what's going to happen is I'm going to get four tapestries and four geometrics, and we'll just see what we get, of course. Let me hit go. And the idea here is anything that you're trying to wonder about. So if you're in a deadline, you're trying to get stuff done, and you're wondering, should I use this color or that color? Should I make it use a flower or a geometric shape? Should I use a lion or a tiger? Should it be daytime or nighttime? Whatever it is, you can use this to push out more designs at once automatically. So that really can help you. And so here we're wanting transparent layers. That's a prompt, floral tapestry, ombre tones, which of course is kind of a fade look, color palette. It's kind of our look here, right? And then we've got a bunch of different versions because that was on our variety level, okay? And some of these are gonna be perfect. Some of these aren't gonna be useful. This is why I make four at a time. I just want more variety because that helps me get to the end result faster, okay? So look at that one. That's pretty amazing. So maybe you're doing some backgrounds for social media. Maybe you're doing something that you're gonna paste inside some type. Uh, it doesn't really matter. This is how you can come up with a lot of uh, really cool ideas quickly is with the power permutations curly brackets separated with a comma. And I'll also add, you can use this for trying out multiple SREF codes at once, trying multiple omni weights at once or stop weights at once, trying multiple aspect ratios at once. It doesn't matter. It works for all of that stuff. So here are the geometric ones. Let me scroll up to that which I think I kind of like better. That's kind of cool. So like, how would you use this? You know, this is some sort of background or you're doing a, you know, a lighting study. I don't know what you could use these for. That's kind of neat. But what we want more than anything is how do we develop more interesting ideas quicker? That's the whole idea of using Midjourney. To me, that's the whole power of Midjourney. By the way, you can use more than two words in here. We can do a lot more than that. So that can help us, you know, maybe get six or seven ideas at once. A lot of times, by the way, I will try out like 10 different SREF codes at one time with this technique. Now, caveat here, buyer beware, is that this totally eats, the more of this stuff you use with the power permutations, the more GPU time you're eating. I have the highest plan, so it doesn't really affect me much. But if you're on a lower tier plan, I wouldn't go more than two or three, otherwise you might run out of hours. Just be aware of that. So anyway, so those are five brand new ideas, hopefully for you. I want you to try them. I would love it if you picked one or two of these ideas and did something with it 
And then in the comments of this video, drop me a note and let me know which one of these you like the best, which one worked for you, or maybe it didn't work. I wanna know, right? I'm here to help you. And speaking of help, we'll love for you to jump on our Mid Journey Experience community over on the school platform. This is where uh, creators, professional creators, just like you are hanging out, they're learning, they're sharing what they're doing. We have a lot of fun stuff in there. Every Tuesday we do a open Zoom call and people come in and show what they're working on or have questions and we work through that stuff live, right? So anyway, we'd love to see you there. The link's in the description. Just click that, join our group. We'd love to see you there. Thanks for watching the video. I'll talk to you later.